Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 7, Sutton E. Griggs. Born in a small town in northeastern Texas, Sutton E. Griggs followed in his father's footsteps in becoming a Baptist minister. He extended the reach of his political engagement further by being a vocal advocate of several of the most prominent civil rights organizations of the early 20th century. Although Griggs authored more than 30 books, including novels, biographies, histories, and religious tracts, his literary reputation remained fairly minimal within his own lifetime. He was far more acclaimed and influential as both a social activist and as a pastor. Decades after his death, though, there's been renewed attention given to the first of Griggs's five novels. Imperium in Imperio, the title of which means Empire Within an Empire in Latin, was originally published in 1899. The novel imagined a secret government within the United States that offered African Americans sovereignty over themselves without needing to return to Africa, as numerous Black nationalists have proposed through the years. This excerpt from Imperium and Imperio reveals the origins of this idealized Black nation-state. Chapter 16, Unwritten History. Belton gazed fondly on the handsome features of his noble friend and sighed to think that only the coloring of his skin prevented him from being enrolled upon the scroll containing the names of the very noblest sons of earth. He drew near to Bernard and said, I must begin. Another government, complete in every detail, exercising the sovereign right of life and death over its subjects, has been organized and maintained within the United States for many years. This government has a population of 7,250,000. Bernard leaned forward, anxious to hear what purported to be one of the most remarkable and at the same time one of the most important things connected with modern civilization. Belton began. You will remember, Bernard, that there lived in the early days of the American Republic a Negro scientist who won an international reputation by his skill and erudition. By the publication of a book of science which outranked any other book of the day that treated of the same subject, this Negro became a very wealthy man. This wealthy Negro secretly gathered other free Negroes together and organized a society that had a twofold object. The first object was to endeavor to secure for all the free Negroes the rights and privileges of men, according to the teachings of Thomas Jefferson. Its other object was to secure the freedom of the enslaved Negroes the world over. The money which the scientists left was wisely invested, and at the conclusion of the Civil War amounted to many millions. Good land in the South was offered after the war for 25 cents an acre. These millions were expended in the purchase of such lands, and our treasury is now good for $500 million. This money can be used by the government in any way that it sees fit, so long as it is used to secure the recognition of the rights of our people. They are determined to be free and will give their lives as freely as they have given their property. This place, as you know, is known as Jefferson College, but is in reality the capital of our government, and those whom you have just left are the congressmen. You, sir, are the president of the Imperium in Imperio, the name of our government, and to you we devote our property, our lives, our all, promising to follow your banner into every post of danger until it is planted on Freedom's Hill. Follow the link at the top of this page to the Texas State Historical Association's biographical entry on Griggs. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of A Deeper Dive into African American Literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio.